you want, you can hit it with a bit more ghetto gospel. No, 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 we've been through that one. Or use vegan parmesan, I don't know if that's any good. I can imagine not, but you know. What you gonna do? All that's left now is to turn this into a butternut squash pumpkin. What? Uh, I'm sure it's taste the one first. Ooh, that's really quite nice. Do you know what, actually, I'm gonna pour myself a glass of that, because that is a very nice oh, one. Chin chin, old chap. I'm gonna nick that bottle by the end of this. That's, I'll have to remember that. Give it a drizzle with olive oil. I keep saying olive oil when I can make myself for it. I mean, yeah, there's butter in there and there's a bit of wine. I'm talking about it, I'm gonna top my glass up. That is a stunkingly good wine. I don't even know where I got it from. Buongiorno. Oh, why do I try and do accents? It's so cheap. Um, so, still winter, still crap weather, still a bit cold and moody. But we do a nice autumn winter comfort food. We do pumpkin risotto. Except I couldn't get pumpkin, so it's butternut squash. But works exactly the same for pumpkin. When in Sainsbury's, couldn't find a pumpkin. Sainsbury's always has pumpkin, to the point where it's got a running joke with me and my better three quarters. Whenever we go in there and see a pumpkin, we go, do you want a pumpkin? Should we get a pumpkin? Proper joke, right? For years now. The last couple of weeks, months, no pumpkins. I went in there and I asked the lady, just in case I was missing them, because, you know, I can't see my hand in front of my face sometimes. I went up to the bird in Sainsbury's and I said, sorry, have you got, uh, got any pumpkins? She looks at me like I am an absolute fucking specialist. Uh, you do know it's not Halloween? Like, you could have just said no, fucking cheek of it. Uh, I was like, well, you've always, usually you always have, I'm like, no worries. So anyway, here is a small-ish butternut squash that we have prepared. Uh, half of it pureed, half of it chunked up. Works the exact same for a pumpkin. You don't want one of the big orange Halloween pumpkins. You want uh, the smaller sort of green ones that have got like that mottled webbing sort of pattern on the side. They're like good eating pumpkins. Um, but we prepared this about half hour ago, thusly. So, it's half hour ago. Magic. Nipped it, and then we're gonna just chop it in half. Carefully your fingies, because this is gonna, it's quite tough. Feel free to use a hatchet, if you've got one, or a machete, or a cleaver. All we're gonna do is get rid of all this crap in here. You might want to get a spoon to scrape it out. You want to get all the seeds out and also the sort of membrane-y sort of stuff. There's nothing wrong with it, it just ends up cooking a bit better and having a bit of texture. So, two halves. We are gonna grab a few leaves of sage. I'll we'll stuff that in there. A few sage leaves, probably a better way of saying that. I'll sprig them in that one. And we're gonna get a sprig of rosemary Halve it, shove that in there as well. Give it a drizzle with olive oil. I keep saying olive oil when I can make myself for it. And massage in, make sure everything's coated. And give it a sprinkle of salt, both sides. If you hit the cavity as well. And a hefty crack of black pepper. I like a peppery root veg. And these are both gonna go cut side down on a baking tray, baking sheet. Uh, you can stick some foil under that if you want, or baking paper. And in a 180 oven for half an hour. And then half an hour's time we'll be back and we'll make it carry on. Right, oh, half hour later and a little bit longer than half hour. So half hour later, put it out. It's a knife, a knife, a knife. Just nice and easily puncture through it with no resistance. You're good to go. Right. Let it cool down till you can handle it because it'll come out of the oven, obviously, really quite hot. Once you can, we're gonna puree, mash, crush half of it, and then we're gonna chop up half of it. So grab off and a spoon. Now, you can do this in a food processor, you can do it in a blender, you can do it just in a bowl with a potato masher, put it up to you, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna use the old hand whizzer. We're just gonna scoop the flesh out from half. We're gonna add almost a ladleful of stock. 
in there with it. And then we're just gonna give it a zhuzh. Add a bit more stock if it's not chuching properly. There we go. That's a nice, depending on what you're using, pumpkin or what's this? Butternut squash puree. And our other half, all we're gonna do is peel skin back. Should just peel away. Like I said, let it cool down first because this has been on the side for 20 minutes, half hour, and it's still quite warm. Doesn't matter if it starts to fall apart a little bit. We're not looking for well defined chunks. Right, and now we're just gonna. Chunk it up and whack it in a bowl. You're not going for super precise, formal, it's quite a rustic approach. Okay, and then that's our butternut squash prepared. So, I'm gonna jump back. Am I jumping forwards in time again now? Or, technically I caught myself up anyway, so I'm where you were, so. Temporal paradox, I don't know. But, uh, back to the uh, actual risotto. All right, and there we go, back at it. So the other bits and pieces we've got, not too much. Should be quite quick and easy as well. 200 grams of risotto rice. Uh, this is our Borio, but Calaspara, I believe, is the other main one. Or you can just buy risotto rice, which I don't know what braid that is. Braid, would that be the one? Right thing? <laughs> um, we've got a shallot, kind of medium size, one of these banana shallot, scallion shallots, and I've got a little baby leek, which I believe baby leeks is like baby corn. It's not actually a different thing. It's just they pick it earlier. Uh, a bit of butter. A bit of parmesan, salt, pepper, olive oil, and these are some fried sage leaves. Got a video for making fried sage leaves. They're just they're just a nice little garnish. Uh, we do actually want some fresh sage leaves as well, not too many. So we also want four fresh sage leaves. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna mince up the shallot, the leek, and the sage leaves. Super fine. Um, you want to? It does kind of matter. You really want to get it fine. You want to make sure. Every bit of onion and leek and sage is smaller than a grain of rice because you don't want to really even know that it's there in amongst all the rice. So we're going to prep all this up and we'll get cooking. So I'll be right back. I can cook it. I end up only using half. So we're cooking a large dinner portion for two or start of four. I only ended up using half that shallot because there was a fair bit of leek there anyway and it always ends up looking bigger once you start slicing it up. So half a medium to large shallot. I use half a white onion, brown onion. Whatever. Uh, a few other bits we've got. We've got a nice dry white wine. This is a white Rioja, very dry. A Sav, Sav Savignon Blanc, work quite well. A dry white wine, any dry white wine. We're only gonna use about a glass of that. And we've got a liter of chicken stock. Uh, some of that, a little ladle for two, have gone in to make our puree, but it's all gonna end up back in here anyway. Time to start cooking. So uh, I'm using my saucier pan, any pan, saucepan, large frying pan, anything like that will do. We want it. I've got about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in there already. It's the olive oil I use to make the fried sage leaves. So if you're gonna make the fried sage leaves, make them first in that oil and it kind of infuses the oil a little bit. To that, we're gonna add a decent sized knob of butter. This is my own, some stock, some stock cube stock and some homemade stock, whatever stock you wanna use. Um, that is chicken stock, because I like this with chicken stock. If you go in veggie, use veg stock, it'll be just as good. Uh, if you want to go vegan, cut out the butter and just use a bit more olive oil or maybe use a vegan alternative for butter. I don't know what that's like for cooking. And also make sure you get a vegan wine, obviously, because not all wine is, not all alcohols are vegan. Best utensil, flexible spatula, because you want to get into all the crevices of your pan. Uh, just going to melt that butter. Oh, also, decent parmesan. I think I've said that as well. Obviously, if you're vegan, no parmesan. Or use vegan parmesan. I don't know if that's any good. I'd imagine not, but you know, what you're gonna do. Right, so, first we go in with our shallot, leek, and sage. And we're gonna give that a little pinch of salt, not too much. Oh, make sure your butter is unsalted. You should, only, you should always cook with unsalted butter so that you can manage the salt in your cooking. Unsalted, uh, salted butter is for on your toast. And I want a half decent crack of pepper as well, because I quite like this to be quite a peppery dish in the end. I, I don't think this needs any garlic, but if you want some garlic in there, you do you. 
Uh, I'd mince that up, crush it up really fine and go in at this stage. Right, just before the onions and that are starting to get a bit of colour, we're going to go in with our Arborio rice. And we're just going to toast that rice off in the butter and the oil, stir it all up. So we're just going to toast that rice off to the rice just... People say it starts to look translucent. I don't know if that's the right word, but it will start to change colour a bit and you'll notice it. It'll only take a few minutes. Okay, so rice toasted off for a couple of minutes. We're going to go in there with a smallish glass of wine. I'm sure it's taste the wine first. Ooh, that's really quite nice. Um, you don't actually need particularly good quality wine to cook with. So if you won't drink, you can't drink it, don't cook with it. That's kind of true if it's really, really acrid, but... But on the whole, any wine that you're gonna be able to buy in a supermarket is gonna be okay to cook with. So we're just gonna cook that wine off, get the alcohol out for a few minutes. Should already start to be getting that nice creamy risotto starchiness starting to form. Right, now we all know how to make a risotto, don't we? Add in your stock, a couple of ladles at a time, and just let it absorb it in. Um, people say you need to constantly stir a risotto. That's not necessarily true. What it's more important about is keeping the rice agitated. So the the grains of rice move against each other. Uh, Alton Brown, the great Alton Brown taught me that. All you really need to do is that is enough. Just to keep the rice agitated so that it grinds against each other and creates the friction that you need to get um, creamy, starchy risotto. Add a couple of ladles in, give it a stir, give it a shake, keep an eye on it. Once all the stock has been absorbed by the rice, you go in by another couple of ladles until Either your, all your stock's done, it's gonna take about a litre. If not, you might get it to the point where it's about about cooked before you've got it all in. Give it a taste once you get down to only your last couple of ladlefuls. If it's not cooked by the time you have used all your stock, which can happen, you can always just a <laughs> bit of hot water just to get it finished. But um, yeah, so we're gonna keep working our ladles of stock in there until we've got pretty much all of our stock in there. So we'll see you in about 20 minutes or so. Okay, right, all the stock's in. Our risotto is now essentially cooked. So you've essentially got kind of just a bit of a plain, if you use chicken stock, chicken risotto. Um, you might notice some flecks of parsley and carrot in there. That's stuff that was in my stock. I uh, didn't realize it was as full of particulates as it is. So, all that's left now is to turn this into our butternut squash pumpkin. What? A butternut squash slash pumpkin risotto. So a puree, we're gonna dump in there. Yeah, all of that out. It's gonna make it a lovely, vibrant orange color. Lovely autumnal orange. And we're just gonna stir that in. Yeah, beautiful. Right now, we're gonna give this a taste. It probably won't need too much salt. Depends on your stock. Yeah, that's good from a salt point of view, but I like it quite peppery. That's completely up to you. And we are gonna add in our bigger chunks of pumpkin or butternut squash and healthy shaving of Parmesan. Uh, to be fair, actually, forget what I said. Put the Parmesan in, then taste the seasoning because the Parmesan's quite salty. So don't add, think it needs salt and then add Parmesan and end up being too salty. Not loads of Parmesan. I'm gonna go maybe 10, 50 grams or so. I'm trying to visualize it. So, hefty tablespoon that we'll say. And we're just gonna get all that incorporated. Just fold it through. We wanna try and maintain those chunks. One final taste, just double check. Mm. That is something special indeed. Proper comfort food. Right, get yourself a plate or a bowl. I think traditionally risotto is supposed to be served, you, I don't know, you know, in a restaurant, you put it on a plate and you knock the bottom of the plate. Like that, to get it to gloop out. That technical term. But, we ain't in for none of that. So we're just gonna slop it on a bowl. Get some of the chunky bits. Probably could comfortably feed four out of this because it is quite filling. And then garnish with a couple of your crispy fried sage leaves. Yeah, voila. Got a sloppy bit on the corner, don't like too much. 
Gotta to remember to take a photo because I keep forgetting to take photos lately. Hit it with a little more parmesan. But there we go. It's lovely, it's sweet and savoury. It's got a bit of pepperiness to it if you hit it with as much pepper as I did. Starchy, creamy, just pure starchy comfort food. And it's not, I mean, yeah, there's butter in there and there's a bit of wine. I'm talking about it, I'm gonna top my glass up. That is a stunkingly good wine. I don't know where I got it from. All right then, uh, final little hit of pepper, hit of parmesan if you want before you serve it up. But super comfort, autumn, winter comfort food. Starting to get a load of more views. I like the last six months, I've like doubled the six months before and that six months was already doubled like the year before. So getting more and more people. So if you're new, welcome. What well, you know, the like and comment and subscribe it does help with the algorithm and getting out there. Share it over social medias and in places. I mean, I know loads of places, sites on Reddit and Facebook groups won't let you advertise YouTube channels, but let your mates know. If you've got some mates, foodie mates, your mums and your dads, whoever. I like to think I'm quite family friendly, even if I do say the jog, uh, F, S or B word. I don't think I've ever dropped a C, have I? I would have edited that, I think, or bleeped it. I'm going to go enjoy that and enjoy that, and I'm probably going to enjoy the other half a bottle. Half a bottle. There's a bo well, probably not half a bottle left, is there? Okie dokie. Okie dokie, pig and a pokey. What the f I'm just going to leave it there, all right? All the best, and I'll uh, see you when I see you. Adios. Uh, ciao.